Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Rob O'Brien. I'm a CIS product manager for Cisco, and welcome to our session. Uh, not in the, the program, I have a co-presenter, uh, Sasi Sivaraj. He's going to be our technical architect expert. He's also going to present to you. So the reason we're here today is to talk to you about CS, CIS very briefly, in 30 minutes or less, if you will, and to give you some uh, ideas and you know, ways to go on how you can scale out your applications in the cloud using CIS and, of course, the OpenStack platform. So the agenda, I'm not going to waste a lot of time. I'm just going to give you some quick introductory slides. Then uh, Saucy's going to talk to you about uh, the types of apps that can be uh, rolled out in the cloud and then give a quick uh, demo. So why hybrid IT? Um, probably by the end of the conference, you probably heard a lot about it, but I'll give you just a quick, very brief overview where you have the advantages of the, the public cloud or the CIS cloud where you have that economics, uh, speed and agility, the ability to scale up your applications, whether it's for dev test uh, uh, work, uh, if you have an application that's cloud ready and you want to have uh, additional capacity into the cloud. But then on the other side, uh, although you're developers, uh, you need to be nimble, you want to get things done as quickly as possible, you also work for you know, either smaller organizations or larger ones where you do have to follow the rules, if you will, or play by compliance rules. And that's where your uh, managers and you know, IT directors will be watching for rule violations such as data sovereignty, uh, security, and control. So therefore, to have a hybrid, uh, true hybrid IT solution, you need to take into account both you know, the speed, economics, and scale of public or CIS cloud as well as you know, data center private cloud rules such as control, security, and David so sovereignty. And then you have you know, your traditional applications, you know, fixed loads, things that are secure that will stay on the, you know, the private cloud, if you will. And then things like application worker portability, you have that leverage where you can rent capacity, move things to the public cloud or CIS in this case when you want to take advantage of scales and economy of scale. And then as it says here, scale applications in the cloud as you need to. Uh, some of the challenges, so one of the things is like that lack of security. Uh, it's great to use public clouds, but that said, you got to make sure they're secure, making sure the policies, the network policies, uh, the security policies are following your applications when you go between the public and private cloud. Uh, complexity, uh, although you, know, you look at all the PowerPoints and all the things that you've been you know, seeing, it seems a lot easier than it can be at times. So you want to make sure that when you're putting together your, your applications, doing development work, that you're taking into consideration uh, complexity issues, as well as having you know, siloed applications where you don't want to be creating things twice or multiple times, making sure you're taking the cloud into consideration when you're developing your application. And one, you know, having that one approach to, uh, you know, cloud would be, you know, having you know unified workload management, having the ability to move any type of workload or application, any type of VM, not being, uh, you know, dependent on a certain platform type to move that into the public cloud and back when you need to. Uh, having your network and security policies follow your workloads, you know, in between the clouds, whether you're working in your private data center, or if you're going to scale out to the public cloud, and then when necessary, being able to move back. And then having the opportunity to you know, leverage uh, the partnership, whether you're working with Cisco directly or part of the larger uh, network of partners that are going to be part of the intercloud uh, you know, platform that Cisco is coming out with. And then tapping into uh, local data, so having the ability to move your applications into the cloud, do the work that you need to do, but still being able to access data and rules and tools that would be a part of your enterprise or private cloud environment. And then just a final conclusion on this slide is that for your hybrid IT cloud solution, you just want to make sure that you're having you know, security, you're following your various compliance rules, uh, allowing for secure uh, application mobility and portability between the private and public cloud. So a quick overview, so you've probably, I know InterCloud Fabric is getting a lot of attention this week at Cisco Live. For the solution that Cisco is working on right now, and that's what, you know, Saucy is our lead architect, and he's only been with the organization for like three months, but he's getting things going, and this is targeted for later this calendar year. 
But for this solution, we're going to be using InterCloud Fabric software. So how it would work would be for on your enterprise side uh, or private cloud where you have your various types of uh, uh, hypervisors, vSphere supported today, Hyper-V and OpenStack are in beta right now, but you know, work is being done there. You'd have using InterCloud Fabric software, you'd have you know, the end user portal view where you have your various cloud VMs, catalogs and templates that are available to you. Uh, IT admin who would be setting up these uh, catalogs depending on what your organization is using or requiring. You'd have, uh, and then you'd put in the various configuration security. So providing that secure solution that you'll need to have uh, the ability to do um, you know, hybrid IT or being able to scale out your applications into the CIS cloud. And finally, having that secure you know, policies will follow applications so when you do scale out in the Cisco InterCloud services, whether it's for the dev test use case or just to scale your applications when you need to for uh, capacity augmentation, for example, you'll have that security and that end-to-end -end control of the whole entire solution. And then just uh, to reiterate some of the use cases that we see the most often for this solution would be first capacity augmentation, the ability to burst out into uh, the cloud with your applications. So if you're an e-commerce organization, you can burst out into uh, the public cloud as necessary to take advantage of additional capacity as required. Uh, keeping the data local, so making sure you're following your organization's uh, compliance and security rules. And then the dev test use case, which we see a lot of, where you have that ability to move an application that you've developed into the public cloud. You can hit on it from different directions, see how it's going to uh, handle different types of workloads, different kinds of uh, use on the fly. That gives you that ability to move it out into the public cloud and bring it back when you're done and move it into production. And then finally, shadow IT control. Keeping everybody honest, you know, no, you know, the developers always want to do the best, but you know, sometimes you get frustrated working with uh, you know, your internal organizations. But then with this solution, it'll be the ability for the IT managers or directors to keep uh, management of what's going where, and therefore everybody will be uh, you know, taken care of, your needs will be taken care of, as well as the compliance and rules that an organization needs to follow. And now I'm going to pass it over to uh, Sassi, and he's going to talk to you a little bit more about uh, the types of applications and uh, additional details. Thanks, Rob. <clears throat> yeah, Th these are the type of applications, uh, meaning like there are only a few examples, but our solution, like Rob was explaining, it's happening in the infrastructure as a service layer. So any application in terms of virtual machines, you are looking at moving to a Cisco cloud or any other public cloud, we could uh, incorporate our service, our offering, Cisco InterCloud Services. It could be any type of application um, uh, in terms of big data, collaboration, dev and test, uh, multi-tiered, uh, scale-up, scale-out application, and uh, whatnot. So this is on the high level on the component of our, our solution from a private cloud to the public cloud thing. There is a, the key differentiator is we are not pitching this product as a, just a cloud migration to, uh, tool. This is a solution. You feel the same security and the policies of your private cloud happening in the public cloud. You get the layer two extension of your private cloud network into your public uh, cloud with a consistent policy across the pipe, actually. So I will just uh, take you through the workflow, how it really happens. It's not really a hot and live migration. The VM needs to be shut down. Let's say an uh, enterprise admin, he wants to move the workload from, uh, from his data center um, to the public cloud, Cisco cloud. So the first step would be uh, the VM needs to be shut down and it got to be converted into a QCOW too. You don't want to flood the pipe with the raw image, so it got to be converted. And the fourth thing is, so it just flows across the pipe, reaching the Cisco cloud or any other public cloud, and you just power up the VM, and you manage that VM seamlessly like the administrator used to do it on the private cloud uh, in their own data centers. And there are two use cases for the hybrid cloud. You know that, right? So one is a capacity uh, augmentation. That could be a seasonal demand or 
the enterprise customer might see some unexpected demand for their products, so they want to scale up quickly rather than spending so much on the capex, right? So by looking at the opex, they are coming for the pu public cloud solution. And we got a, we are stressing on this ICF shell that's more secure, high-level construct. It offers different kind of trusted VMs, uh, encrypted data between the VM communication and the cloud security groups. So the VM to VM communication, a specific user restricted to a specific VM that uh, it gets very granular in terms, uh, in terms of security. So in the ICF shell, uh, like you see, the best part is like uh, you could still continue use your enterprise services. In a classic three-tier application, there is a web, uh, there is a authentication services, uh, there is application services, and a backend database. So the enterprise customers still keep using the enterprise authentication and ID and authorization service, as well as the data backend, but he could use only the some tiers of application and the entire uh, front-end web service could be running on the public cloud. So this hybrid cloud makes it possible the next scenario is uh, the developer and that are moving the dev and test environment to the public cloud. Because the developer, uh, he might be compromising his security by just going directly into the public cloud. By using the intercloud fabric solution, he gets the comfort zone of the private cloud. So his, his resources are properly um, monitored and uh, properly securely um, uh, constrained in the sense like only the VM to VM communication and the network uh, uh, is being consistent. So uh, our entire solution, the you know, secure shell, makes sure everything is in consistent place. And let's move on to the recorded demo. We want to sh uh, show you some couple of scenarios. Uh, one is uh, deploying a virtual mission and an uh, enterprise admin, he wants to provision a new VM for scale-up purpose in a public cloud. The second one is he wants to move his current VM from a private cloud to a public cloud. So there are two use cases. So let's say there is a company called Global Car. They are trying to uh, move some application into the Cisco cloud. And there are like a three tiers of application. There is a web, app, and database. So if they want to you know, just scale up some, uh, some phases of that application, they could just move to the public cloud by allocating the templates of the virtual machines they have already in the private cloud but uh, providing the uh, templates or the, the copies of the virtual machines in the public cloud. So the templates is already ready to go for the enterprise admin. We are going to take it to the ICF fabric or the dashboard where admin could go and launch his virtual machine exactly the way he wants to uh, keep it in the public cloud. So when you get into that, there is a tab called um, the catalog the, the profiles are already ready, the web server and app server, how the enterprise administrator, uh, he wants to launch it into the public cloud. So we are going to uh, launch a VM from one of those templates. I think it gets a little far. Okay, now we are going to launch the instance called App Server. So you could, the catalog or the template, it's already available, and you could name your virtual machine, the one you are trying to launch. We are giving some sample name to it, the CRM App Server something. And you could move on to the next tab. Here is the virtual machine sizing. In regards to your, uh, the virtual machine template, you could size it up amount of RAM and CPU, and you're submitting a request to launch the instance. So the service request has been submitted, and you could get into, uh, you could find the status of the specific service request that you just launched by click, getting into the services, and it's currently being provisioned by the PNSC 
it's just a matter of a minute or two, it's going to happen. It's pretty quick. The next step is we are going to take you to the OpenStack dashboard. Our Cisco Cloud is fully OpenStack. We are going to take you to the dashboard and see the VM is already in there, so it must be in there. So to refresh this page, it takes more than a minute. So let's move on to the dashboard of the OpenStack. Uh, you could use the enterprise admin, he could get authenticated through his enterprise AD service. That's the best part about it. Like you could still continue using that enterprise administration services. And you could get into the project, and there is a project called, uh, this is the enterprise admin's project running in the public cloud. And you could get into the instances. Like you see, the instance has already been uh, deployed. The top one, like you see, the CRM app server 41 is the one we just launched. If you look at the uptime, it just zero minute. So this was one uh, we just launched, actually. So that's one use case. So if you refresh it, you could see the service request, the entire workflow has been completed, and the status is updated. Takes a bit. So it's been, the entire service request process has been uh, taken care of already. Now we are moving on to the virtual resources to track the VM in the dashboard, the existence of those VMs. So if you refresh it, you could see the app server, the one we just deployed, it's being listed in the bottom of the list. So it's already available. So you could seamlessly manage your private cloud VMs along with your public cloud VMs in a single console. That's the best part. There is a second use case. That is where you know we were talking about the migration stuff. You know, uh, this is not a live migration, uh, but there are some uh, some parts of VM or application. So the administrator they want to push it to the public cloud. So first thing is part of the secure extension, the network and security policies have been migrated to the public cloud. It's ready for the virtual machine. It's coming along the pipe. So it's already going to be set. The platform is going to be, the foundation is going to be available for the virtual machine. It's coming into the public cloud. Now we want to move some virtual machine from the private cloud to a public cloud. And we got into the dashboard. You could go to the same virtual resources page. Like you see, there is a private cloud VM. It's running on your on-prem data center. And we are pushing it to by clicking this option, migrate VM to a public cloud. In this use case, we are picking a Cisco cloud services as a destination. And we are proceeding with the migration. Like you are aware, the entire image conversion and the data flow going across the pipe, it's going to, uh, it's not really a VM deployment time. It's going to take quite, uh, more than a few minutes. So if you keep uh, refreshing, you could see the moving of the migration of the VM has been occurring. But let's uh, you know, uh, pass the video to pass the 12 minutes time. Like you see, the, it took about 12 minutes to migrate the VM from on-prem to uh, the public cloud. In the dashboard, you could go back to the virtual resources page and get into the VM tab. That is where you are going to seamlessly uh, manage your uh, uh, the private cloud virtual machine and the public cloud virtual machine in the single console. Like you see, there is a virtual machine. It's already been migrated from your private cloud. The one you initiated, it's already been moved to the public cloud. The one you see on the red, that was the one we uh, kicked off. We, uh, that was the VM we pushed to the public cloud. But there was an option that's a flexibility. You could choose to delete the VM upon migration on the private cloud. So uh, yeah, just in, uh, to resolve the conflict of the redundancy, there is other option. You could just leave it alone, but it's being shut down. So there is no IP conflict or any entity conflict between those virtual machines because they are uh, bound to serve the same purpose. So that's been shut down. If you go back to the OpenStack dashboard, like I said, the Cisco Cloud is all OpenStack. So the, the specific instance we just migrated from a private cloud to a public cloud, it's already available. It's up and running. 
So this is another classic uh, scenario. So uh, this is how you, know, you could deploy by based on the templates, or you could just migrate your existing virtual machine with all the applications, all the pre um, databases, and uh, whatnot to the public cloud. Uh, thank you, Prof, if you want to close the note. Great. Great, thank you very much, Sasi. So to just quickly wrap up, uh, as we were talking about, we have this uh, new service that's gonna be coming out, uh, hybrid IT cloud solution based on uh, Cisco's intercloud fabric software that we've talked about, and Sasi gave you a quick demo. And just to quickly conclude, would be to show you know, the benefits of this solution. So as Sasi was mentioning, you have you know, both the benefits you know, of the, the you know, private cloud, the ability to move VMs, applications, workloads out into the Cisco cloud based on OpenStack for it to meet your various needs. Uh, for example, the, you know, your choice, uh, you know, putting your applications and workloads where they need to be, whether it needs to be in the private cloud, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, traditional applications not made for the cloud can run on the you know, your your private cloud. With that said, you may have your know, newer cloud-based applications that you want to run in the public cloud or at least test on. And that, those are the VMs that you can move over into uh, the Cisco InterCloud, and then you can do work there and move it back and forth as necessary. Uh, having that consistent uh, networking and security where those policies will attach and when you move between the, the private cloud and CIS, uh, you will have that secure layer two uh, extension, so you do have that uh, security that you need to have a true uh, uh, hybrid cloud solution and getting that control so you know, your IT departments will be able to control the entire environment, having that uh, view where they can manage and have control of what you know, the employees are working on. And then finally, making sure you're being compliant, uh, realizing you want to get things done quickly. Uh, the public cloud CIS does offer a lot of that, but then you also have to uh, you know, follow your organization's compli compliance and rules of governance, and therefore this solution gives you uh, those abilities as well. Uh, so uh, somehow we were able to get ahead. So we actually we have uh, five minutes uh, for questions. Uh, are there any uh, questions in the audience? Uh, if not, uh, again, thank you very much for your time and for listening. It was greatly appreciated. Uh, both Saucy and I will be uh, out in the hallway afterwards, so if you want to come up to us individually, we'll handle any questions you may have. So again, thank you very much for your time and uh, support of Cisco and Cisco Live, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and your trip home. Thank you.